Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here and it is Monday today and since Monday is normally a mass make day, mass make Monday is usually the hashtag for Mondays, unless you're doing mixed media, then it's mixed media Monday. I just thought I'd do a little follow-up and show you what I'm doing with all these cards. Now if you remember in my last, uh, I don't know, one of my last videos I showed you all these uh, printed copies of old artist trading cards that I had made years ago. I had kept a copy for myself uh, just to to see what I had made. and But I got to the point where I said, nah, I don't need to do that anymore. So I was going to uh, recycle the paper and then I thought, well, I'll just recycle these printed cards into something. So you've seen I've used a few of them uh, to make some artist trading card um, reproductions and I've uh, played around in in some of the collages I was doing the other day. I think I still have one on the table. I don't know if I do or not. No, they've all gone by the wayside already. I try to file everything um, within a couple of days uh, in their rightful places so that when I want to do a, a journal, I, I know where everything is. I try. Don't always get that far, but this time I did. But anyway, I, I have all these left. And uh, yesterday I had a few minutes in, in the studio and that's a story in itself. Um, and I came up with an idea and I'm so happy with this idea. I like it. It's not nothing new, but it's something that I'm just going to show you what I'm doing with these. And my plan is to get all of these done. So that's going to be part of my follow up Friday to show you all the ones that are done. But <laughs> yesterday I only had a few minutes because I think I told you my cat story from the other day. Well, we had to get a clean urine sample from the cat <laughs> no not surgically or anything like that <laughs> but we had to find a way to isolate Ringo our cat because we have four cats and Lulu is our upstairs uh, she's my little princess and she's our upstairs cat uh, uh, day and night and the other three cats um, come upstairs all they want as long as they are supervised because uh, they have a tendency to be really mean to Lulu and so we separate them if we're not going to be home. The, the three boys are downstairs and Lulu is upstairs. But um, in order to get this clean urine sample from Ringo, I mean the, the three male cats share one litter box and then Lulu has her own private bathroom. So, so we had to isolate him. And so we ended up getting him in the uh, spare bedroom and uh, we, we put him in there during the day and it was a constant battle with him because he wanted out of there and so we had to find keep going in and um, comforting him and coaxing him but he wouldn't pee and we had to get the sample by this morning uh, to to back to the vet because <laughs> you have to do it in a, a short period of time. And so that was a big kaflafel, which left me very little time left in the, by the by the end of the day when we set up the room where that he could have his his bed and his water and food and anything to encourage him to drink more. And uh, and a litter box and the litter box had to be just a plain plastic container and they give you these plastic pellets so that when they actually pee. Are you okay with me telling you all this? I hope. <laughs> you can collect the the urine by using a syringe and and then putting it into a container <laughs> well he refused to go in there so he screamed and he howled cuz he had to go to the bathroom but he was not going in this box and and the you you would hear the pellets flying uh, all across my my spare bedroom floor and knowing that he was just stirring them around and he wasn't going there and we we kept checking and through the night he would just howl he would not go in this this litter box. So this morning I thought, well, we're at wit's end now. He's not going to go, but you know, as soon as we let him out of there, he's going to go straight downstairs to his litter box and go. So I said, you know, I'm going to give him a, a little bit longer. And so I waited about another hour and finally I realized he went because he, I could start to smell something. So <laughs> I thought he did it all in the litter box, but no, he pooped beside the litter box. <laughs> And he did pee in the litter box. So we did finally get our sample. But anyway, so that has just taken up my whole 
day and a half with with this cat sample. It's now already, I delivered it today, so it's at the vet, and hopefully, you know, there won't be anything that's discouraging in there. It's just a follow-up to our appointment we had with him. Um, but that's what's keeping me away from my videos. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you uh, this, and um, it'll be just a quick little video, so I won't keep you too long. I also had in my pile here, I had lots of these different vintage um book pages and and they're heavier paper and they are leftovers from from another project that I had worked on I had just piled them all together and uh, with the idea that I was going to do something with them and I thought you know I want I have such a huge pile of those let me just show you and I think there's still more buried down at the bottom so so I wanted to get those used up and um I thought, well, I'm just going to make some quick envelopes. They're the right size to make like a little folded envelope. And and you've seen these before where you fold it in three. Well, you fold it once to make the envelope part and then you just fold it over slightly. And these I leave open. And I usually have um, 20 of them in my ephemera box like this. Um, for me, whenever I'm doing a journal, I can grab one and, and just decorate it with whatever I'm using for the journal. And, um, uh, so I normally leave them like this, but, but in order to use up some of these things, I thought, oh, wouldn't this be nice? Now this is one of those cards and I've torn the edge. I hope I'm in camera all this time. And I'm just going to, um, staple it with my stapler in place because I know I'm going to cover this up uh, a little bit more later with other decorations. So I'm just stapling just along the edge of the page. And this now becomes enough weight to hold the envelope flap closed. And you can open it up. You can put uh, a little notepad in here, just like we did with the... Um, um, sticky notes so you can put a notepad in there um, you can you can glue it three sides onto a page and and use it as a, a pocket and then still have this on the outside let me get a book page let me get a book page because I have them handy no I don't <laughs> I moved them all okay there must be one well we'll make one here's a book page Okay, so I have a page here. So you could glue it down. Now this might be a little big. I'll have to trim it down. Um, but you could glue it down on the two sides in the bottom and have a pocket. Or you can um, glue it down on the top and the bottom and have a belly band. I would probably go this way and have a, have a belly band going right through. Or you can just leave it as a floating pocket or a floating envelope to, uh, to put into a tuck spot. Or you can also make it as a tuck spot by just gluing two sides and then leaving this completely open to, to put stuff into. So that was, that was how I did this. And, uh, other than that, I, I was inking the edges. Um, but I decided I'm going to even leave that until the end because I don't know if I'm going to be adding stuff inside and I might, I might be using different inks at the time. So I figured I just, that's all I have to do. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then I thought, okay, Let's do that again. Fold it. Fold a little bit down just to make your flap. And use one of these. Oh, I have so many of these. So I have this one that has, it looks like piano notes to me. And all I'm doing is centering it in, on the flap as best I can. Now you could you could glue these down ahead of time if you wanted to, but I'm just doing this because I know I'm going to do more stuff to them so I can even take the staples out afterwards if I decide I don't want to leave it like this. But I will probably collage on top of this card yet uh, eventually and maybe run something across here so you won't see my staples. But the only thing I do uh, say and say over and over again is to always, um, which I didn't do on the last one, is to always press your staples in. And the very first time that you cut yourself with your own staple, 
you'll remember this this tip to uh, push your staples in so you don't bleed all over your paper. So there you have it uh, with a greeting uh, with a playing card. Simple as easy peasy, right? And so going back to this one, all I did was I tore the edges of it. Um, you don't have to use uh, any type of uh, printed card, whatever you have. You might, maybe you have some milk pods. Um, maybe you have a ticket. Let's do a ticket. And I, I'm sure I've shown you a ticket before, but we'll do one anyway. Um, maybe you have bus tickets or um, fancy ephemera tickets or uh, numbers. But here's a ticket. So your ticket can go on here. And in this case, I'm just going to put one because, like I said, I'm going to do something with them after. But in no time at all, you have quite the pile of them. I can sit and watch TV and do this. That's a little bit crooked, but there we go. Just my ticket was crooked. And, and I can sit and watch TV. And this creates a nice little tab for opening. And it allows people to realize that this opens up, that there's something uh, beyond and uh, inside here. And so you can put all kinds of things. You could just put a one flat sheet in here um, that's glued down. You could put a notepad. You can um, have just a secret spot for tucking things in. You know, some, some ephemera for people to put in their books. Lots of fun little projects for that. And then... I love when this happens. I looked at this and I thought, okay, that's going to be a big envelope. But if we fold it this way, you can take that same card that I'm using or print or or whatever you have or or it could be a die cut flower it could be a tag that you use i'm just stapling it on here like i said to hold it in place and when i'm actually working with it is when i will actually do all the finishing but this gets it off my desk and it goes into my ephemera box and i then i can just grab it when i need something in this this kind of color so now you can open this up and have a long skinny notebook. I was just making one to play, but this paper isn't wide enough. Um, but you could have a long skinny notebook inside here. You could even get fancier and put a little closure here that wraps around. This can be a long belly band uh, where you can still put things behind it on your page. Isn't that pretty? I mean, with a nicer paper, of course, it would be pretty. And you can still embellish it even further. So there's lots of options that way. You can also, again, glue it on three sides. So along the top, down the, the side of it and down the bottom and have another tuck spot here. So you could add something else inside there like that. So you could have two of them on a page if you wanted. Now, you don't have to leave it at that. You can have, I just happen to have a crochet doily and a butterfly because we do and bam look at that bada bing bada boom <laughs> just like that i don't think i can use those phrases can i i think they're uh trademarked <laughs> but then i i went one more more time and i said well gee what if i fold it like this and i add this here like a tab I love this stapling. I'm not leaving it like this, but I, I love that it. it just seems so fast to me. And I'm just gonna catch it here. And so again, another playing card used up. Lots of possibilities to decorate with this. This can open up and have a notebook inside, or it can even have a like a little mini journal inside here. So uh, you know, five or six small pages folded in half in here and you've got a journal that you can either sew on the sewing machine or uh, hand uh, hand um, do your book, in, book stitch, your signature stitch. Lots of options. So I'm just going to quickly show you, like these are the ones I just showed you right now. Look at that. I made five. 
in a matter of a few minutes with you. But this was one I had done where I trimmed the sides off of the uh, the page, the margins, so so that it's um, a little narrower and it'll fit quite nicely on a page. And that one's inked and ready to go. And, and I inked on both sides. This one I haven't finished. This one I, I started playing where I was collaging and then I realized, no, don't do that now. Wait till you're actually going to use it and, and put it in a, in a journal. And then you can use all the papers that you're using in your journal uh, to incorporate into your, your ephemera. Uh, but again, simple, easy, and done. Um, another one with that card. This one's just a little wider uh, with one of my artist trading card prints there. A little more square but longer and this one this one I made a pocket here and a pocket on the back and how I did that was my paper wasn't um, very big so I just folded the paper itself to make the flap and then I folded another piece of paper around it in half now of course these would be the same size to do this and I took my my um, punch, my um, circle punch and made two thumb tabs. So a scrap piece of paper, folded in half, two thumb tabs. And I slipped it up and glued the sides on both sides. So I, this would have to be trimmed down. Uh, but I, but I um, glued the sides on both sides, front and back. And when you close this, you have a pocket on the outside and a pocket on the inside. And I think it's um, Corey Dahlman, Dahlman that that does a, a little quick video on doing this, um, which is where I saw it the first time. I think it's Corey Dahlman. Um, and yeah, so I just made that with one of my uh, artist trading card prints. And now I have two pockets that I can use um, in this as well. So this would be a floating pocket. You wouldn't add it in. But you could still... Um, do some kind of a flippy thing if you wanted, um, depending on the type of journal that you're making or the journal page you're working with. Another one here with this uh, mermaid image. Um, I like the the long um, tabs here because you can you can uh, feel the weight and it just helps to hold the envelope down. This one was done with a piece of music sheet going this way. Another one, the same thing going in this, this direction. And so in no time at all, I had, I have this huge collection of these and this one was one of my favorite. This is Mona Lisa. She's a playing card and you open her up and again, lots of writing possibilities for, for a, a notebook or, um, just even a plain piece of paper to write on. Um, uh, another one that I tore down Another one that I used as a side tab that you open up. And this paper needs a little bit of a repair in here, but um, there's that one. Uh, another playing card. This is a great way to use up playing cards. I don't, I'm not, I think I've said this before. I'm not really fond of playing cards, but I buy them because I like the pictures and I like the vintage look of the pictures, but I don't, I don't want to cover them. And yet I don't want to use them where the numbers are showing it's, it's a mixed thing for me. I started decorating in this one too. And then I realized, stop, you know, uh, this is just for um, getting this done. And here's another one with this little girl on here. Same thing. So this is just a quick little video to show you and remind you. Sometimes, you know, we see these things and we say, oh, we're going to do them. But sometimes we just need a little reminder to do them. But look at how much I made last night playing and then how many I made today uh, in this video you know just five just like that so so they're quick and easy to make and a great way to use up those book pages oh it just creams my corn um, and when people say that they they um, re recycle their their book pages because they don't know what to do with them or they don't they don't have a use for them um, I, I can never have enough. So, so, uh, I hope this gives you another way to, to use your book pages and, um, to, to repurpose them into some fun, fun art projects. Now these, like I said, they're going into my, uh, ephemera file. I will show on Friday the rest of these, uh, just to show you what I did with them. 
I may make a few other little things to go with it as well. Um, but but um, eventually you will see them in projects where they're more decorated. You know, this can have labels, birds, butterflies, flowers. All those things that we fussy cut can be added onto these. But it depends on what you're going to use it for. So I don't want to waste time decorating the back if I'm going to glue it down. Or, you know, if I'm going to use it as a belly band where nobody's going to see the back. And it's only going to be an interference if you're trying to put something in there. So there again, I like to wait and see how I'm going to use it. But this is a great start that it's almost ready. And then when I'm going to do a journal, I just pick through them, you know, because most of the time my style and most people, we kind of gravitate to the same kind of uh, styles, colors, mediums. So so you will find quite often that they, they go with whatever you're working with uh, or one way or another. And if it doesn't, it, it still can easily be um, collaged over top to create a different look. So one way or another, it can still get used and it's it's half done. So that's it for this video. Just a little quick Mass Make Monday. And I made five in no time at all. So I'm going to keep playing for the rest of the evening and hopefully get all these done and off my desk. Uh, another project to, to finish off. I hope you have a creative day and a creative week. It is Monday, but let's uh, start out with a bang and start uh, producing some fun and, and different things. And I look forward to talking to you all soon. Bye for now.